All right, everybody, Joe Daniels from Swing This Kettlebell and Strength in Latonia, Kentucky, here talking with Pat Flynn of Chronicles of Strength. Um, I've been, you know, connected through Facebook and different media outlets to him or, you know, with some of his posts from a lot of friends. Like, we kind of share some of the same views in fitness. The dude's all about kettlebells and minimal training, you know, no machines and all this stuff. Um, so anyway, like, Pat, um, you got some new books coming out. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, first off, thanks for, for having me on, taking the time to chat with me. This is, this is going to be super cool. Uh, so, yeah, I got two books coming out. Uh, the first one's called Paleo Workouts for Dummies, which Dan John has called, you know, the perfect temple for training, and also a very good book with an awful title. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and I completely agree. Sometimes when you when you work with big publishers, you have very little say in what a book's actually called. So this is an example of that. Uh, and that's on uh, uh, on just my philosophy of fitness minimalism, which I'm sure we'll get to talking about. And then I have a second book coming out called Fast Diet for Dummies, which again I believe will be a very good book with an awful title. Um, I hope this doesn't like become like what I am as a guy who writes really good books with awful titles. But uh, that book is entirely on intermittent fasting. It takes a very objective approach to some of the more popular uh, intermittent fasting approaches today and offer some guidance on how to go about, uh, you know, approaching intermittent fasting and implementing into your lifestyle. Cool, it sounds good. Um, so, what if you're, we've, we've kind of the same ideas of fitness minimalism, um, you're really big into kettlebells, um, what other tools do you like to use? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the kettlebell, like I say, is a tool, it's one of my favorite tools, um, but it always comes back to the fundamental question is, is, you know, what do you want to achieve? So, depending on what you want to achieve, you should always use the most effective tool to get the job done. Now, and sometimes that might be the cowbell, sometimes it might be a barbell, sometimes it could be calisthenics. Um, I use, those are my three primary modalities right there. If you, if you give me a kettlebell, a barbell, and just my own body, uh, you know, I'm certainly happy there. Uh, you know, I love to mess around with a bunch of other things as well. Uh, sandbag training, um, I've played around with club bells, mace bells, uh, you know, sleds, prowlers. You name the device, uh, I, you know, I've played around with it, but, you know, being a, a minimalist, if we're going to talk about that, I would say, um, you know, the bare essentials, at least for me, is the kettlebell, the barbell, and just being able to control your own body weight. Exactly, and that's one of the biggest things we preach at Swing, at swing This, um, is f form over, you know, form beyond anything. you got to be able to control your body before adding any external resistance, um, you know, Fix the muscular musculoskeletal imbalances. Get the postural consideration right, um, especially about kettlebell. Think about this: you can't bring a barbell easily in your car if you're going for a trip, right? No, no way. Kettlebell, you can put it in a backpack. I've I've rode to the beach and uh, you know Myrtle Beach and Destin with a kettlebell a couple miles in my backpack on my bike, hopped down to the beach and had a great time. Try doing that with a barbell. <laughs> I mean, right? You make an excellent point. I don't think anybody's going to become a world-class bodybuilder or a powerlifter with just a kettlebell. Exactly. But if, but if your goal is to just be in generally good shape, to be generally really strong, stable, you know, to, to have some decent work capacity, uh, to have good mobility and flexibility, I think you can achieve all of those with just a kettlebell. Sure. Um, since I'm I'm into the kettlebell sports stuff, we do a lot of stuff about you know deceleration because we're going for a lot of higher reps. So. Olympic weightlifting, there isn't too much deceleration, right? Once you get, that, once you get the weight up. But then, um, so I got guys that come down here and they want to make their, you know, Olympic lifting better. And I hand them a couple heavy kettlebells. I'm like, all right, let's take these 248 kilograms and let's jerk these. And they can't do it. But they can easily jerk over 300 pounds. Uh -huh. So that's only, you know, two-thirds of the weight. But, the, you know, the control and the stabilizer muscles, um, kettlebells have a very big advantage as far as that as far as you know training your body but you know both sides the even amount yeah i, I completely agree you bring up the, the excellent point of deceleration um uh, you know i think um olympic lifting is marvelous when it's done right and um you know there's a lot of uh you know ways you can do it wrong there's a lot of ways that people do do it wrong but one of the limits of olympic lifting or, or traditional barbell lifting is that deceleration component um, one of the reasons that I love just the basic kettlebell swing is because it teaches you both how to produce and reduce force. From exactly, the, exactly. Which is, which is huge. And then once we get starting into, into cleans and snatches and jerks, then we start to learn how to redirect force. And very few tools uh, can teach you that as easily as the kettlebell can. 
Sure. I mean, you're going from one point to ten. Like, like what we talk about, uh, Valeria, Valeria Fredorenko of the WKC and I talk a lot about um, kettlebell is about not as much time under tension. So, you, like I said, if you're trying to build some muscle, you definitely need some time under tension um, from, you know, my old bodybuilding days and stuff like that. But when you're training for maximal, like, work capacity, we're trying to do a, a lot for kettlebell sport. Um, the thing is, you, we're going from a point of tension to a total different point of tension with, diff, with, ver, oops, with uh, varying degrees of, of weight, right? Yeah. So you pull, say you're pulling uh, a 24-kilogram bell on a kettlebell swing. Well, that thing, it starts at 24 at the bottom. It's, it goes to weightless up top. And then every pound in between. So like, you're, like you said, you're quickly training proprioceptive mechanisms of your body to uh, understand that weight. And that's like real life, you know? I think, I think you made a great point in there. Uh, you, said, you said work capacity. And then when it comes back to what is your goal and, and you know, what is finding the best tool for that goal, I think anybody who has a goal of capacity, the kettlebell is one of the absolute best tools that you can use. So... so one of the fundamental, you know, principles of my whole minimalist approach is no matter, you know, what you're doing, um, whatever your goal is, is are you doing the right things, right? If you want work capacity, are you doing the things that are going to have the most significant effect on your work capacity? And I think if capacity is one of your goals, then you absolutely should be training with kettlebells in one form or another. Exactly. I, th I think one thing that's really good for, speaking of uh, other stuff, you know, you said barbells, I think a great way to develop work capacity with the barbell is to do complexes. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you guys, I'm sure you guys get into those a little bit. Yeah, well, you know, I, I am, like, absolutely obsessed with kettlebell complexes. I do a yeah. number of barbell complexes as well, but, like, kettlebell complexes and metabolic conditioning with kettlebell complex is one of my absolute favorite things to do for capacity. I actually... I prefer it over the barbell for a couple of reasons. One is you don't have to constantly uh, adjust the weight for various movements. And, and two, when, sure. you, when you're doing it with, with kettlebells, is you get a pretty seamless flow between exercises that it's, it's hard to achieve with the barbell. Exactly. Uh, it also, uh, I, for, for example, I just think if you're going to do some sort of complex with double cleans and presses, the movement is typically going to be cleaner and safer with a kettlebell. It is going to be with a barbell. Um, yep, and, I feel the know, same way. You just press the barbell overhead. Notice that there's, it's a lot easier to compromise on that movement than it is with two kettlebells. Sure, like I see a lot of people with, uh, you know, wrist issues with uh, backwards, you know, real far extension of uh, extension, of the wrist. Yeah. yeah, and holding up there. And then the same thing is a lot of almost too much internal rotation when they're holding the barbell overhead. Now, if you do it with kettlebells, those guys are spinning over your head and they're taking your arm off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that's one of the, just, one of, for overhead work, again, you know, selecting the right tool for the job, right? For overhead work, I really do prefer the kettlebell uh, to the barbell in almost all instances.